How are you today? <laughs> like a proper pop folk leader, hey, what's up? Hands up. Um, but I ask you to remember this question, what's the story? Because actually it changed my life. You see, on my ID card is written that my name is Andrea Andonov and it says that I am from Bulgaria. But am I? My father's surname was an Andonov. His name was Ahmed Ademski, but somewhere around 1970s, the Bulgarian Muslims were forced to change their names and he picked his new name, Georgi Andonov. On top of that, my mother is 100% Ukrainian. So today, easily, my introduction could be, hello, I'm Adam Ademski and I'm from Ukraine. You see, in my father's story, there wasn't any cultural understanding. It created pain and hatred, it divided people, it separated friends from families, and in the end, it didn't improve anything for anyone. On the opposite, my father and my mother moved beyond the physical and the cultural borders. They fell in love, they embraced empathy, care, compassion, and probably their only mistake was me because they were expecting a baby girl, but, you know, mistakes happen. Uh, but anyway, they succeeded to be just human beings, which probably is the most important thing. You see, I was born and raised in 1984. TED was founded in 1984 as well. And I was born and raised in a small city on the border between Bulgaria and Greece, which is called uh, Ruduzem. There, I grew, I grew up in a multicultural, multinational, multi-religious family, but society as well. Because I had friends who were half Bulgarian, half Russian, half Bulgarian, half Ukrainian, half Bulgarian, half Vietnamese. We were a group of friends who were Muslims and who were Christians, who were locals and who were from different parts, uh, different parts of Bulgaria. But despite the differences, we loved each other and we spent the most amazing childhood you can imagine. There, I always felt half local and half foreigner. You see, but this made me think about a lot of things. <laughs> because at the end of the day, that's why I want to talk about this topic of cultural understandings and how my movies impacted and uh, has allowed me to, to develop these themes in my works. Uh, but w what happens when there is no uh, cultural understandings? Let's see. I, I would like to share some examples from later of my life. It was around 2006 when I spent one year in the States. And my perceptions and knowledge for the States was entirely made from the pop culture and the movies. I'd never met an American before that, so I went there and I... I, but I traveled, I traveled a lot. I traveled from north to the south and from east to the west. I met a lot of people from all walks of life and my perception about states changed completely. You see, uh, in there was a story which I even filmed with my cameras, but it's a long story. I was uh, late at night in a bus station somewhere in Massachusetts and I was waiting for my friends. And over the sudden, a guy came into it. It was very late at night. And the guy looked like a homeless. Or at least I thought that he was a homeless. But he approached me and began a conversation. And during this conversation, I was shocked of how many things he knew about Bulgaria. It was just amazing, insane. And then I realized that all of my prejudice towards him was because of the st stereotypes I had about the people. Also in the States, it's a crazy story, <laughs> I won't tell you the entire story, but in the States I shared a house with a bunch of Jamaicans. It's very fun, a lot of music, a lot of reggae, 
And uh, I will never forget the moment when I used the N word in front of them. They were shocked. <laughs> if you can see their faces, and I realized that I was making some big mistake. But thankfully, they knew that I was just uh, miscommunicating, and because of my ignorance, I was just using a word which in Bulgaria we are using without any negative connotations. So they, uh, how to say, accept my ignorance. So another outcome of uh, cultural understanding or the lack of cultural understanding is uh, miscommunication. What else to tell you about the importance of cultural understanding? In later, or let's say not later, but early in my childhood, I, I remember when I, for the first time, experienced what is uh, marginalization. Uh, I had a, probably in the first or second grade a schoolmate who, who was from Roma origin. And this boy was hated and uh, mocked and harassed because of his origin. And what did I do? I became a friend with him because I knew how a person feels when he is uh, excluded and when he is judged just by his uh, cultural origin. So overall, the lack of cultural understandings limits opportunity for growth and progress. And if there is no cultural understandings, people very often rely on sources like pop culture, cinema, which potentially creates harm, harm, harmful narratives and further leads to biases and further stereotypes. So that's why I think that filmmaking and filmmakers has to use cinema in order to develop cultural understanding and promote empathy, care and love. So let me tell you how I start my journey uh, as a filmmaker. Every summer in my childhood, my family traveled to Ukraine from Bulgaria and we drove from Bulgaria to there through three different countries, Bulgaria, Romania and uh, Ukraine, of course. And it, take us, it took us around five to six days. And at that time, there, was, there wasn't any phones or internet, so imagine my companion was a boredom. And thanks to boredom, I learned to create movies in my head. I visualize, visualize very rich scenes, characters, stories, and I, I edit them in my head. But how I did it? I was using a pen or some subject in my hand, and I was doing something like that, and probably I will go now crazy. So when I do something like that, my imagination fires, I immediately see pictures. And I can stay like for hours like this. I can stay here for tomorrow, probably. Like, and I'm seeing now films. I see a cowboy, a horse, somebody shooting at him. Crazy stuff. And my, f my family at some point thought that I was going crazy for real because I was sitting in the back seat doing like this for like the entire day. No speaking, no interaction. But they had to accept my craziness. But you see, even when I can make this kind uh, of things in my head, which later on I uh, realized it's very difficult, and very few people can build the entire movie in their head, I still, as a child, didn't believe that it was possible to become a filmmaker at that time from a small city in Bulgaria. And that's why I graduated as an environmental consultant with the mission to save the world. And that was 2004 far ahead from the green movement. And I worked few, for few years as an environmental consultant, and I love it, to be honest. And in 2008, I went to Dublin, Ireland, to continue my career. And in Ireland, they have this kind of greeting and saying, when they meet you, they say, what's the story? Instead of saying, how are you, what's up, how, you know, what's going on, they say, what's the story? And I decided to change my story completely. I applied at uh, Kulasti Dulik um, College in Dublin for uh, their subject of film studies, digital filmmaking. 
And this time my cultural background helped me and they accept my uh, application because they, their argument was that they have never had a person from Bulgaria with the environmental study background and with this kind of personal story applying to their college. And they decided that, yeah, this guy has a lot of stories to tell, so let's give him a chance. So the next couple of years, I dedicated my life to study the art of world cinema and the craft of filmmaking. While I was busing, where I was uh, working as a waiter, a chef, I worked in one amazing restaurant in the center of Dublin, in the Temple Bar. And uh, I was studying shoulder to shoulder with amazing people from Ireland, from South Korea, from Nigeria, from Finland. And guess what was my chosen film crew? <laughs> exactly, it was super international and super multicultural. And to tell you a, a very interesting story, the first day at the college, our professor met us and he said to us that only one of us will have the chance to make a feature length film. We were around 30 people, so the chance was around 3%. And I ended up in this 3%, not only with one, but with two feature length films. The other story is that I went broke and uh, unemployed after those films, but that's another story. So overall in my life, you see, whenever there was cultural understanding, the outcome was positive, uh, except the broke part, but anyway. So you see, the power of cinema gives you this, uh, uh, Actually, I believe that cinema gives you the power to communicate with the entire humanity. And this is, for me, the greatest power of cinema. The greatest power of cinema to, to communicate with people, and that's why we filmmakers have to use it properly. In 2007, I made my first debut feature film. It was about a young person's quest for liberation and awareness, and I shot it entirely in my hometown in Rudzem. But instead of emphasizing the traditional values, I challenged stereotypes and the perception of uh, female sexuality and, sexua and, and uh, human potential. Another of my movies was about a, Ro a guy from a Roma origin. It, it's a documentary about this guy who fights against the struggle of his life. He brings us to his... Uh, world of an adopted kid who has a mission to bring the Bulgarian folklore popularity. And last year, he reached to the Bulgarian god talent, Stoyanchu. Probably somebody of you knows this guy. And I made a documentary about him. Amazing story. You see? But what's interesting, in 2020, my second film debuted. And uh, COVID-19 killed it. We had a theatrical premiere around the entire country, but unfortunately, I was devastated to learn that they had to close all of the cinemas because of the pandemic. Sadly enough, the same year, one of the greatest filmmakers in the world cinema, Kim ki -duk, passed away from COVID-19. And the previous year, I was at Berlinale Film Festival, and I was riding my bicycle on an empty street in Berlin. And over the sudden, it was very late at night, and it was February, very cold in Berlin. And I was riding my bicycle back home, and I passed a man. And I saw his face just for a second. I couldn't believe what's happening, and I had to stop. I was just in total unbelief. I had to stop, I turned around, I sped back, and I stopped in front of the guy. And it was him, Kim ki -duk. And this event is one of my most extraordinary events in my life because I told him that because of his movies, I became a filmmaker. Kim ki -duk, body of work, explores the darkest and the brightest spots in human soul and mind. And what, if, what is culture if not the projection of our souls and minds? A guy from South Korea and a guy from Bulgaria were deeply connected in an empty street in Berlin. An incredibly established world filmmaker, incredibly established, you have to check his, if, if you don't know, 
goeie skiemkie doek, and a complete newbie, clicked and connected because we understood, understood each other. And I think that connection is fundamental for cultural understandings. And that, culture and, uh, and, to, and that to have cultural understanding is not just nice to have, but uh, is an, an essential component for our collective well-being. So, to cut it short, let's challenge stereotypes and promote empathy. Let's build bridges between cultures and people and use cinema to build bridges between cultural divides. Let's ask what's the story and listen to the many answers we get. Thank you.